Hello and welcome to another video. My name is Richie Scholl from Worthington Distribution and today I would like to talk to you about the Spico White Light Intensifier Camera. We're going to take you through a little bit of a history on what Intensifier really is, how it helps you. We'll take you through the specs on this particular camera and what applications it's good for. And then we're going to get into some real world examples as far as what it looks like inside and how it performs there and what it looks like outside and how it performs there. So to kick this off, this is the Spico White Light Intensifier Camera. Intensifier is a technology that's been around for Spico for many years and it really started back in the analog days. The idea behind that is that Intensifier takes whatever minimal light is available in the scene that it's looking at and it amplifies it inside the camera to provide you with a full color image at night. So you can kind of uh, tell the ramifications of that are pretty huge. We're now looking at an image where we can say, well, instead it was uh, being a tall person in a hoodie that you know broke the window, it was a tall person in a red hoodie with blue pants on, uh, or it was a purple car, not just a car. You know, whatever the case is, or whatever the the application is, that that full color at night is incredible. Plus, you also don't have to worry about some of the IR issues that we tend to run into. You know, when IR illuminators are really strong, you get some washout sometimes or some reflection. Um, there, are, there are little intricacies with IR that um, anybody who's worked with cameras have had to overcome, which is doable, but Intensifier kind of takes this uh, nighttime viewing to a whole other level. So in order to take that light that's in the scene already and amplify it to give us that color image, Intensifier cameras have uh, a special chip on board which just performs that function. So this isn't so much just a lens function, there's really some processing going on within the camera to convert that image to, 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 to amplify that light and provide this white, this color image that we can see on our recorder. Moonlight or street lights uh, outside, maybe a soda machine or a snack machine inside, and these little sources of light are typically enough to activate intensifier and to make it work. So what makes the white light intensifier better? <clears throat> the white light intensifier uh, is going to have three, and you can see them right on the bottom here, three white light LEDs that will come on automatically if there isn't enough light in the scene already. So why is that important? What we've seen over the years with Intensifier is that it's really possible for an installer to go walk a job site and start to spec out the cameras to provide a quote for that customer and say, sure, you know, we've got some, some street lights or some parking lot lights or some wall packs on the wall, whatever we have, yeah, there's light here, we're good to go. And you double check with the customer, are these lights on all night long? Absolutely they are, you're good to go. Come to find when you do the installation, maybe a week or two later, maybe the customer was mistaken, maybe there was some bad information, maybe those lights are not all, on all the time. So on nights where there's a, a bright moon, it probably runs just fine. On a cloudy, overcast, perhaps rainy night, uh, and those lights aren't on, now you've got a problem. The thing with Intensifier is there's got to be some amount of light in that scene to work with. Otherwise, we're not going to get that intens Intensifier function to fire up and, and be effective. So. That's what those white lights are for. We're going to artificially throw some light into that scene uh, and make the intensifier work and have that color image that we're looking for. These lights on the camera will throw 100 feet away from the front of the camera, depending on scene reflection, you know, depending on some factors, but we're looking at in that 100 foot neighborhood typically, um, and, and that the light that it produces is enough to give you that color by night functionality. So let's talk about the specs of the camera. What's in the box? What are you really getting here? This would be a bullet style camera. It's available in other form factors as well. You can see we've got the, the, the typical wire pigtail hanging out of the back. You have your ethernet connection, which is typically all you're gonna use. There's also a power connection if you're not using PoE, and there's a, um, an audio input on here as well. We have the really nice uh, toolless adjustment here. So we've got the, the screw that you can un undo and tighten up to let the neck go and roll any direction. So that's on it. Um, and then obviously on the front we have no nighttime LEDs. This is, these are uh, visible light only on these. And that's all an automatic function. So that's your camera. You're also going to get the waterproof connector. So you still want to run your own CAT6, whatever cable you're running, but the idea here is that you slip these two pieces on before you put the connector on, and then there's a kind of a bushing in here. It's a, it's a rubber piece. So as you tighten this down, it's going to get tighter around the camera. And then this also has weatherproof connectors, so when you, when you lock that on there, you're going to get a fully waterproof connection. Now, the other advantage is that's all happening inside the back box that comes with the camera. So the back box, which is going to come packed with a whole assortment of uh, connectors and screws and all the mounting hardware you would need. There's also a gasket. We've got a, an opening on the bottom and an opening on the back. And you can route your wires any way you need to. I put the gasket on, put this on. Now the flange from the camera, this part here, 
is going to fit onto the bottom of the, on the side of the box, and you've got a whole weatherproof setup, no problem with the wires, everything that could possibly uh, let water in is gasketed or is sealed some way, and that comes with it, so you're, you're good to go there. So next, let's cover the specs of this camera. This is a 5 megapixel camera, so any recorder that can support that sort of frame rate or that sort of resolution uh, is going to give you that 5 megapixel video. Keep in mind for reference there, when you're watching high def video, not 4K, but typical high def 1080p, what we consider uh, to be high def video on TV or anywhere else, that's 2 megapixels. So this is really two and a half times that, so a ton of resolution here. Um, and why is that important? The reason those high, res re the high resolution cameras get really nice on these on the modern network video recorders, the NVRs, is really on playback. So if you, if you look closely, areas that we used to cover with maybe two, three, or even more cameras, oftentimes can just cover with one really high quality camera now because we have a higher resolution. If you go back to the old days of analog recording where we're at you know, 720, 1000 lines if we're lucky, usually much less than that, there's really not a lot you can do to zoom in on that um, digitally. <clears throat> you're just not going to have the quality there, not, a lot, not enough pixels in the, in the image, you're going to get that grainy, really blurry kind of picture that, that's almost unusable. When you're up in this 5 megapixel neighborhood, even less than this, but especially in this 5 me megapixel neighborhood, we're recording this on the NVR at that full 5 megapixel. So that means when you're playing back a couple days later or a week later, whatever the case may be, you can zoom in then. So a fantastic example is, you know, check out lanes in a grocery store. You know, where you might used to have one camera on every single lane, maybe you cover two with one camera now because you have the power to zoom in on either one. Or, alternatively, you can say, well, I'm still going to use as many cameras as I used to, but I give my customer the ability to really zoom in and see facial features, what writing was on the person's shirt, you know, was there any, you know, markings that might identify whatever it is that we're trying to find, um, and with that enhanced resolution, you can really get that. So 5 megapixel here, which is just tremendous. We also have operation down to negative 40 degrees Fahrenheit. We don't need an additional enclosure. There's heaters. There's there's uh, enough uh, there's enough technology and, and heat created in the camera that it's reliable without fog, without icing, down to negative 40 Fahrenheit. Another really nice thing. Obviously, in a camera this size, we're going to be weatherproof, outdoor rated. So so no problem there. It's ready to go. Again, I talked about the the gasketing and all the seals that are in the box. So outdoor is no problem. It also have what's called true WDR or wide dynamic range operation. Wide dynamic range is a feature that allows the camera to deal with harsh sunlight situations that are coming directly at the lens. And again, if we rewind to before we had this kind of tech in these cameras, you might see some playback um, video or some clips where um, the video again is almost unusable just because of the harsh sunlight in it and it gets washed out, completely whitewashed. Um, and you really need to think about that in terms of when you're doing cameras and, and which direction they're facing, you know, where do we mount them to, uh, to avoid that harsh sunlight certain times of the day when it's shining right in at the camera. Well, with WDR, wide dynamic range, not such an issue anymore. So if you really think about that with this particular camera, now we're saying, give me harsh sunlight, no problem. Give me minimal to no light with the white lights that are built into it, also no problem. So we really run the gamut on these lighting situations. The last thing on this camera is the analytics features. There's a ton of stuff packed in here that really makes this super usable and really kind of an enhanced experience for your customers and something that you can offer that not everybody does. Um, and it really comes at a very affordable cost. So the analytics that are in here would be face detection, um, and we'll, we'll kind of elaborate on these. We have face detection, human detection, vehicle detection, line crossing, uh, intrusion, and scene change um, analytics all built in. Now there's a couple things to keep in mind here. With these analytics cameras, you've got to use them with the analytics recorders. So in Speco, that would be like an example is the NRE recorder that I have right here. So some of the, of the Speco, like some of your entry level or economy series, are not going to support any analytics. Can we use this camera on that recorder? Absolutely. It's going to come up just fine. You're going to get all of the advantages of the white light intensifier, all the other specs. The only thing you would lose is those analytics because that is kind of a uh, cooperation, so to speak, between the camera and the recorder to make those analytics happen. So let's say we do use like an NRE style recorder um, or even the NRN, some of the newer ones. So those have the analytics built in and you get all those features that I mentioned. And the really cool one is the facial detection. Um, there's, there's kind of two things to keep in mind that we have facial detection and human detection. 
So what's important when you look at the, the object detection, like human and vehicle, you can set rules in the recorder really easy to set up to say, you know, don't just let me know when there's motion in the image, let me know when there's a car, and or let me know when there's a person in the image. So now we're not having a squirrel trip it, we're not having, you know, breezy, uh, you know, wind that blows the, the trees around trip it. Uh, you're really just getting what you want, which is people or vehicles in that case. So we've got that. To take that to the next level, we have facial recognition. So now we're not just saying, let me know when any person's here. You can say, let me know when this particular person's here. Um, we've got a whole video that we'll link to down in the description that shows you how that works specifically. We'll also take you through it really quickly at the end of the video here on this particular recorder. But basically, uh, you can program in, or I should say, set rules uh, for certain faces that either are do not trigger notifications. You can say, let me know if anybody but people in this group show in front of this camera. Or you could say, let me know if anybody who is in this group uh, come in front of this camera. So a, a really quick application for that is the grocery store and shoplifting. You know, if you've got a known maybe group of shoplifters, you can pick those faces out of existing video on your system. So go into playback, pick those faces and set up a rule and say, you know, when, when these five, 10, however many people, we put them in a group. So anybody from this group comes in front of any camera that has facial recognition on it on your system. When they come in, send that out to the app, which is usually what we do. We can do email, text notifications, but if you use the app and a push notification, now you're going to get um, an actual push notification up on your home screen with a picture of the person who's there, and you can uh, tap on it and play back a couple seconds of that video pretty much in real time. It's absolutely incredible. Um, so that's built in there. A couple of other ways to add faces, you can do it through the app. You can actually take a picture of somebody with a standard camera or your phone camera and upload it. Um, but it's easiest just to pick it out of, the, uh, out of the video that you already have in there. So this is a really quick overview of the camera, what features it has. Um, really super good, I think, usually for outdoor applications is where we normally see this getting used. Um, and it's really, really good to give you that enhanced you know, color by night kind of um, video and image uh, that you're not going to get out of a lot of other, other cameras. Really unique uh, to Spico kind of technology. So next we're going to get you over to the recorder here and we'll show you what the camera looks like. We're going to show you the IRs coming on and we'll move on from there. So now we're going to take this camera and connect it to our NRE8. This is an 8-channel um, NRE series recorder which does have analytics. Um, so we're going to connect this, and this is a brand new camera, first time it's been connected, so we'll go through that together, and we've got a screen grab of the recorder you'll be able to see, so you can see uh, what it looks like on the actual recorder. So this is connected to channel 4 on the back, I know that's a channel that I have not used before, so we're kind of giving it a fresh start. We're going to connect, and now we'll put a quick timer up here. This is how long you can expect it to take until a camera comes up on the recorder. So here you go. As you can see on the computer screen, and you're kind of looking out into the lights and everything is set up outside of our, uh, our setup here, you are now seeing uh, this camera as it came up for the first time. So that's pretty much what you have to do. You plug it in with Spico. These are what we call the plug and work kind of setup where there's really, there's no setup. You plug the camera in um, and, the, and the recorder manages all that. For those of you who aren't familiar with Spico's, you know, plug and play automatic setup routine, um, there are, in this case, eight additional ports on the recorder in addition to the network port on it and those are four cameras so each one is dedicated to the channel so channel one channel four whatever it is those are poe ports they power the cameras um, they put the cameras on a separate network so we're not using up bandwidth on the customer's existing network and they're going to self-configure for you so here we go you're looking at it we're going to go full screen on it right now so now you see it full screen this is the the full image that's coming off the off the camera and we can we can zoom in here, and this is going to be um, on playback. We can zoom in with the scroll wheel, and then move around a bit. Zoom back out. So f incredible picture there. That's your five megapixel coming into play. Now let's uh, turn off the lights in the room, and you'll get to see the the lights really light up on the camera here. Okay, so as you can now see, we've changed the lighting in the room quite a bit. We've turned off all of the photography lighting and we just have one bank of overhead uh, fluorescent lights running in the room now and that's we can easily switch these on and off for you to show you uh, how the camera is going to react. So let's go ahead and turn off the lights and you'll watch the LEDs come on on the intensifier. Lights are off, camera fired up, and now you can see what we have. So I'll pick this up a little bit to get the table reflection out of there. And here you go. So you're now looking kind of at the room Quick little move around. And there you go. Quite an impressive, an impressive amount of light that you can see come out of here.
Turn the lights back on. So we're back with you and the camera has been recording for a number of days and more importantly for a number of nights so we can show you some of this really cool nighttime video. What you see now is a live view of the camera so you can see the cars going by. This is uh, out by our, our driveway here and to our parking lot. So you can see, you know, we're looking at the building, full color, it's middle of the day right now, so kind of what you would expect. We're going to hop into the playback now. And I want to highlight a number of things. So I'm going to go to my bookmarks. Again, here is on the recording, but we're just looking at the daylight. Uh, we can zoom in, zoom out, that's digital zoom. So this is your daytime. Now what we're really looking for is let's look at some nighttime. So here's one you can see. Let me pause this for a moment. There's just some cars passing there, kind of interesting. So what you can see here, we have um, all the lights on the outside of our building on. These are some of the like architectural upside, are they up and down lights? They're like a 10 watt LED in the top and the bottom. So there's a significant amount of light on the building. You can see very easily right now. So not a surprise if we get a good image, but uh, you know, you can see that we have uh, just a really nice picture, full color. Even an IR camera uh, would an IR camera would not be in color at this point. It would have switched into IR mode. You'd have a black and white image. So you really quite impressive what you get here. And now, if we switch to my next bookmark, this is with the lights in the building off. So it is completely dark out here. You can't see a thing. Um, you can see there's really no light in the sky. This is just the intensifier kind of taking that available light in the image and, and amplifying it. And you can see the light that comes off from the front of the intensifier camera itself and how that lights up the, the image. We stuck a couple of cones out here so you can see what happens on the reflector. So you have that. You can see the lights out in the distance from the car that just drove by. That's a, um, a speed limit sign, so that's reflective. So you get all that. There are a couple of displays that just end up being left on overnight. So you see the door, the lights coming out the door here. And what's also really cool that you can see up in this top corner of the building and down here by the door in the building, those are regular outdoor cameras that have IR. So you can see the IR light, how the intensifier cameras, you know, just can, can pick it up. It's a little bit sensitive to it. So, you know, here's an example, uh, which you see going through, this is just bugs. It's springtime here. There's a, there's a pond across the street, so we, we get a lot of bugs, so you can see that. Um, but this is basically an example of what you get at night. Um, you can get the, the, that zoom in. Really, really cool to have this high quality color image at night. So here are a few images of the actual camera. This is taken from a digital camera, so you can see what the camera looks like. In the dark, uh, here's one with the flash on, so you get a little better idea. And then here's one just of the, of the camera itself. So that's an example of what kind of image you can expect off the intensifier white light camera um, at night. So again, completely dark. If you were to look outside with just with the bare eye right now, um, you really you wouldn't see anything. But with the intensifier camera with the white lights on it, really amazing to see that, that full color image. Thanks for taking the time to watch. We really appreciate it. If there's any questions or there's something you want to look into, give us a call. We'll leave our information in the description. And we'd be happy to have you get started with, uh, with speaker recorders, with white light intensifier, anything you need on the, on the video recording side. Thanks again.